Berwick and Hara Farm, halfway between St John's and Peel. And we're here today with this ploughed match. It was started oh, 15, this will be the 14th match by Charlie Kane, who farmed here 40 odd years. And when Bill Corker should be self with plough and mang style around the matches, we were looking for somewhere to practice. And he lets us go out back, as he called it, up across the other side of the road. He's got some fields out beyond there. And we went up to practice. And it was so lovely, the soil and things. That, so anyways, Harold East was speaking with Charlie and mentioned it. And Charlie says, well, why not have a match? So the first match was held up, out back, as they call it, across the road. And they had, uh, I think they had three pairs of horses up there and four tractors all doing mad. The only thing was it had to be Manx style ploughing. Charlie was adamant that you weren't allowed to plough unless you'd done Manx style ploughing. And the Manx style ploughing of course is unique to the Isle of Man because it, it's the only place you'll see it is in the Isle of Man. And it started when the digger ploughs came to the island after the swing ploughs. It used to be swing ploughs and they'd done what we call hole work and sew the seeds on they done a narrower furrow and they had the divisions between the furrows and the seed was lying in, you had it over. There's a day of course before the springtime harrows and all the rest of it like you see and lots of farmers were only using a thorn bush out of the hedge to drag behind the horse to cover the seeds. But when the digger ploughs came in with the wheels on they were doing a wider furrow and somebody, I don't know who, there's no record of it, who or when, it must have been around about the 1850s. They decided to cut a slice out with a knife, put it on the board, so as if the bed was there for the seeds, all to one depth right through. And this is what they're trying to do in these matches, is to get a bed of us exactly the same depth of seed bed, same width apart, and everything. But it start, that's how it started. And then when the farmers got going in the competition, the ploughing matches really got going underway. The, uh, the, they all do a Manx style ploughing. There was no use going to a ploughing match if you didn't do Manx style. And they used to get hundreds of them, and the farmers used to encourage their labourers to go to the ploughing match because it was getting them to take a pride in their work when they were doing it at home. But to keep it straight and tidy, and that, you have to cut the furrow 10 by 6 and put a knife cut in it, the seed bed, which is a constant depth. And, and this is the art of the ploughing, like you see. And of course, if it's straight, it, it's much better. It looks lovely and all, like you see. But if the measurements are out, no matter how good it looks, if the measurements are not right, you're downgraded kind of thing, like you see. Straightness and measurement is what it's judged on. It, it used to be they had rules that you weren't allowed to use any handheld instruments. It was never that you weren't allowed to kick, give it the odd kick as you were going along and knock the odd lump down kind of thing. But it, they used to disqualify them if you used handheld instruments. But as the competitions died down after the 1960s when the general purpose ploughing took over, it was easier to do and the tractormen were just flying along and that. And the Manx style was dying out and the boys started to pat it up a bit, make it look nicer. and. Uh, it, it does, like if you spend time at it and that you can shift the furrows over to turn the sod like you see and shift it and move it a bit. But it's awful hard work and you must be keen to win a cup if you're going to spend all day out on your hands and knees shifting the sods around like you see. So it, it, it's mainly like only the really keen ones you'll see scraping and, and altering and that. But you see, it's got to be so precise. And when you go from one field to another, you can have a plough, plough and perfect in this field. And you go to the field alongside, and you have to set it up again. Mm. So when they all start at the, at the very beginning, every ploughman is guessing what setting he wants on his plough. And they go a yard or two, and, go, and then the first two where they, they come in, they have to turn in and meet with the same width in the seed bed as what they cut out when they get born. So it's very difficult for the, for to get it right at the very start. And that's why you see them going down after the first two footers with their feet, they're kicking it out and pulling it in and lifting it over. And it's to make it look nice for when the judges come along and see it.
But now we've got like Michael Crellin is, is purely working for the corporation, you see, and he lends the horses out for the winter, and they get fed and watered and all like you see, and the, and the ploughmen look after them and take them round the ploughing matches. So no, there's not an, there's some buying the heavy horses like you see. I mean, uh, Keith Crusher's young fellow ploughed in one match this year, like you see, that's the first time he's done it. And it'd be nice if he could keep coming because they have a good selection of horses down there. But not many people now keep heavy horses. So we're trying to keep this style of ploughing going and that's why we formed the Manx Style Ploughing Club. But in the 14 years that this has been going, it's been surprising how many people have won it, like you see. Hannah Lee has won it three times, Billy Camor has won it twice, his son Ross has won it twice. It, it's no foregone conclusion when you're ploughing Manx style. It's got to be good to the judge's satisfaction and meet with the measurements and all. So to win it is, is a great achievement, like, and uh, it's got to be to the judge's satisfaction. And also the judges, like some judges will go and they'll favour one person or another in the general purpose and they'll give it to them. And nobody can argue because they can't put a stick on it and say the judges were wrong. Yeah, they, they marked that round. So the judges have got to be right as well. And, and you can always double check kind of thing if the judges are right or wrong. I think it's a wonderful thing to be able to do, like you see, for to get it and, and to do a good butt. Mm. The best butt I ever seen done was by Billy Cleland down at Maroon, in the bridge field at Maroon. And it was, oh, perfect, perfect. <laughs>